Manx Radio Sport. Good evening and welcome once again to Friday Sport Preview here on Manx Radio. Rob Pritchard here with you until 6.30pm. I hope you've enjoyed a wonderful week so far. Coming up tonight... In football, a big top-of-the-table clash awaits this weekend in Division 2, whilst the Women's Floodlit Cup is among the pick of the action this weekend. In rugby, Vagabonds ladies are back in the Women's NC1 Northwest on home soil tomorrow, whilst Ramsey men's face a big test away in the Cheshire Bowl. And in hockey, results are now more important than ever as we enter the final few weeks of the mixed hockey season. That is all to come this evening. So kicking things off tonight with football and fixtures, not only on Saturday and Sunday this week, but also we do have one this evening. I can finally say Friday night football as a phrase again. And to go through things over the next couple of days, as ever, is Tony Mapp. And Tony, very good evening. Uh, good evening, Rob. Yeah, we did have two Friday night games, didn't we? But That's we right. lost one. But uh, yeah, I think it's quite good. It starts the weekend early and uh, we keep going till Sunday evening about five o'clock when it all finishes off. It's good. Absolutely. Well, you, you uh, did allude to one there. So the one that was going to be played tonight um, in Canada Life Combi 1, it was due to be a 7 o'clock kickoff between St. John's and Corinthians, but I believe that's moving now to tomorrow. Yeah, it is. I think it was that uh, early rain this morning, about 4 o'clock till about 7. It's uh, caused enough to uh, call the game off uh, tonight. St. John's had a look at it early this morning and uh, fair play to them. Uh, they made the decision quickly and then the both clubs got together and consulted and we've been able to get it on tomorrow afternoon. So that'll be played at uh, St. John's uh, 2 o'clock kickoff. So well done to uh, both teams for getting that sorted out and uh, hopefully with the weather that's on tonight or not going to happen now by the look of it with the rain and tomorrow's nice and dry that the game will uh, be able to take place. Absolutely. Well done to them. And yes, as you mentioned, there is one other game tonight and it's in the Canada Life Women's Floodlit Cup. It's an 8.40pm kickoff, and it's Corinthians. They're hosting Onken. Yeah, it doesn't uh, happen too often uh, for these clubs. Uh, they just have the odd uh, Friday night here and there. Uh, last week uh, we had one and uh, this week Corinthians against Onken. These two always ha- have a good battle. Uh, Corinthians should uh, just about uh, win it. It depends what team they've got available because sometimes the Friday nights can uh, catch them out uh, for the squad. Uh, but I think Dom Dawson will have enough quality there to uh, take the points away from uh, Onken. It is the Floodlit Cup, so uh, some games are played on the Friday night and then a lot of them are played uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, 2.10 and uh, 3.40, depending on uh, what teams are available. But uh, now this is the first uh, start of the competition uh, for uh, Corinthians against uh, Onken. And uh, I think they are, at the moment, the way that game went against Peel, uh, slight favourites to win the competition. Very well, that is your Friday Night Football instalment this week. Let's move into Saturday then, and all games kicking off at 2 o'clock, with one exception, which we'll come to, and there are six games in the Canada Life Men's Premier League. Yeah, and when you you look at them now, old boys against uh, St George's. St George's, I watched them last week, OK. It was a little bit of an effort for them. They didn't uh, really take their chances, and when you've got people like Kieran Old. McNulty there, he'll be playing this week Chris Bass will be there, Sean Quay will be suspended because he got a red card uh, last week but uh, Johnny Meyer's in a better position and I think he's got enough quality there to uh, take the points away from old boys, Robbie Ward still under a little bit of pressure there, you know with player availability uh, but against uh, Jordy's it's going to be tough, Moran against Peel, Peel sort of uh, at the moment are going well aren't they and this is uh, what a, another game to get out of the way uh, qualification for the Decart Railway Cup so if they can uh, keep chipping away like they have they've got some really good uh, players in there and uh, notably one Reese Oates who's been banging the goals in so they expect uh, Peel to beat them around Onken against uh, Russian Onken have done well against uh, a couple of the top sides recently uh, but uh, no Tom Creer tomorrow he'll be playing for FC Alaman as we're with uh, Russian uh, Nick Robinson's uh, team there will be hoping uh, that they've got one or two players back in I think Furrow Davies will play Mikey Williams possibly could be playing uh, so that makes them a lot stronger so we'll see what their team's like but go for Russian to win that Corinthians against St John's welcome return for Chris Cannell he'll play for Corinthians uh, tomorrow no Dan Simpson no Phil Kelly they've been taken away from them uh, so uh, Ben Qualtro has had to change things around a little bit but I've looked at the squad still pretty strong uh, with St John's no Dean Lease he got injured last week and um, 
from what I'm hearing, Rob, uh, could be out for quite a few weeks uh, at the moment, which is a shame, whether it's ligaments or whether it's a broken bone in his foot. But speedy recovery, Dean, but uh, Callum Taggart has uh, come in over the last uh, couple of games, done really well, impressive, he's quick, he's very strong. And I think uh, Sam Brown will be hoping that the boys can uh, take the points away from Corinthians and just really show what they're made of in this league because they really have been impressive. Uh, but without Dean, I think it's going to be a little bit tougher. Ramsey against uh, Royal could be a close battle. Uh, Douglas Royal, yes, have lost a couple of players. Uh, but Michael Fitzmaurice team there, I think is still strong enough against a team that's struggling to find some points at the moment, and that's Ramsey. So I'm going to go for Douglas Royal just to win that. And there against Uni Mills, what a game. This is going to be a real battle. I spoke uh, to Paul Guyver midweek, and he's happy the way things are going. And Tyler Hughes uh, picked up his uh, Player of the Month uh, tournament. But A United, wait and see if Sean Kelly plays, because he's been back in training with them. So if he starts, big, big difference he'll make to the team. And uh, it's depending on if he plays or not. If he doesn't play, I think Mills will win. If he does play, then they uh, certainly got a chance to take a maximum points. We'll have to wait and see. Let's have a quick rattle through the other divisions. Four games in the DPS Limited Division 2, including third hosting first in Castletown versus St Mary's. But four games there. Yeah, it's going to be a real uh, close one, this one there. Castletown against St Mary's, as we've touched on before, Rob. Uh, the forward line is awesome for Castletown. And if anything, St Mary's defence is the one that's going to have to work overtime. Uh, good to see Owen Canapas back from his injury. Jamie Skillen uh, played well last week. But uh, Castletown, when you look at Nathan Cardi, Edson De Silva, you've also uh, got the... Danny Lane in there, uh, you've got Alex Crawley, a lot of uh, attacking power, so we'll see how St Mary's deal with that. Braddon against uh, Michael, another close uh, battle inspected in this. Braddon's players playing really well, good mix of uh, youth and experience, as well with Michael, awesome last week, did well. Governors Athletic against uh, Douglas Athletic, it was a close uh, game this one, but I think Athletic will just win it. And Ramsey Centre against d and I think Ramsey Centre will just prove a little bit too strong. Very well, let's go into the combination leagues. We'll start with Canada Life Combi 1. There were four games down for this one, but one has had to be postponed, Russian versus Onken, so that'll be played at a later date, but still three games going ahead in that division. Yeah, that Russian Onken, uh, Rob, the points will be awarded to Russian because Onken can't field a team, but uh, Peel against Moran, they're second just behind them in the league. You'd expect Peel to win that. Got some real uh, sort of season pros in there that are helping them out. Douglas Royal against uh, Ramsey. I think Ramsey take maximum points in that. And Union Mills against Air. Uh, Two strong combinations and it'll be pretty equal, close affair, uh, but I just think the home side will take it and that's Union Mills. And then we move to DPS Limited Combi 2. There are five games there. One of them is an early kickoff as well. Yeah, it is. Uh, St Mary's against Castletown. This kicks off at 145 at the bowl. Um, don't forget, gents, there's no changing rooms. We've got the boardroom there ready for you. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's uh, all mad down there at the moment. Try and get it done for next uh, Saturday for FC Isle of Man. Uh, but I'm going to go for uh, St Mary's to beat Castletown. Paul Rose against uh, Foxdale because Paul Rose, I think, just a little bit uh, too strong in the forward line for them. So I'll go for Pulley to win. Michael against Braddon. I'm going to go for Michael to take the points in that. Jim's against Malou. You'd expect uh, Malou. Dean Kenley's been in great form. Don't know how many goals he scored, but it's got to be over 20 now. So I'll go for Malou to win that. And D.A.D. against Ramsey Centre. I just think Ramsey Centre will, will take the points there. Well, those are your fixtures for Saturday. Let's hope the weather is kind to us. Let's have a look at Sunday as well. There are three games across Sunday. One of those is the other instalment in the Canada Life Women's Floodlit Cup this weekend. It's a two o'clock kickoff. Peel, and they're hosting Castletown on Sunday. Yeah, Peel up win this, and I don't think uh, Castletown will be looking forward to this. And Castletown struggling for players at the moment. Sickness, injuries, availability. It's hard, you know, when you're working with such a small squad. But hopefully uh, they'll get a team out there and sort of have a go at Peel. But I think uh, Peel will win it. And last but certainly not least, we have two games on Sunday in the Masters football. Two good games here as well. So if you're looking for something to do Sunday afternoon, 2.10 at uh, the bowl, or two, sorry, 2 p.m. kickoff at Douglas Royal. Uh, Douglas Royal against uh, Colby. Colby looking very strong in this, but uh, Douglas Royal played them recently and uh, they've got some good players in there so they can mix it with them and they might have one or two coming back in. We'll go for Colby to win. And uh, Laxey against Air. I think Air are the challenges for Colby for this uh, league. I think uh, they've got some real quality in there. Harry Weatherall played, I think, first game of the season. Don't know if he's still playing because he started refereeing, so well done to him. But uh, Laxey, again, if they've got their strong outfit out, they can mix it with Air, but I just think Air will take it. Very well, those are your Manx football fixtures for the weekend. Well, we have... 
A couple of minutes here, we'll have a quick look at FC Isle of Man this weekend. Well, after their FA Vars exit last weekend, they're back in league action. They're on the travels again this weekend. They'll take on Winsford United in the NWCFL Premier Division on Saturday. They'll be hoping for a change in fortunes after their 3-1 defeat to Hull Corral Boys in the FA Vars, as I mentioned, on the 12th of November. FC Isle of Man 18th in the league at the moment after 18 games on 17 points. And their opponents this time around, Winsford United, currently reside in a similar position in the table. The Cheshire outfit is 16th and four points ahead of FC Isle of Man, having played two games more. Uh, Winsford United versus FC Isle of Man. It takes place at the Barton Stadium in Cheshire this Saturday, kicking off at 1.30pm. Well, looking ahead to this, Tony, um, I suppose a bit to last weekend as well, the FA Vars. They'll have had high hopes, I think, to probably got something from that game. It hasn't worked out for them. Disappointing result, but against a team in a similar position in the league to them this weekend, could this be a good opportunity to bounce back? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And it's one of those, isn't it, where Paul Jones took over as difficult after the week they had before. I'm surprised the players and the management and everybody's heads weren't battered because it was pillar to post, wasn't it, what was going to happen. Uh, but uh, Paul Jones has managed the Ireland team and he's quite capable of doing the job. It's just getting in players to understand how he wants to play. But when you look at the squad, James Rice has probably been given the number one jersey. I think he's the only keeper in it. But you've still got good experience in there and Carl Clark and uh, Alex Maitland. Uh, you've got Jacob Kruk who'll probably play that left back. And then right-hand side, whether it's uh, sort of Phil Kelly or, or me, even Lewis Roberts. But, you know, real young players in that midfield when you look at Tom Shimon, Tina Garvey, Charlie Higgins. Great to see Dan Simpson back. He's been missing most of the season, hasn't he? And then uh, strong people like Steve Whitley, Luke Murray, Tom Creer, and also Kyle Watson. It, it's a balanced squad, I think. I think last week's was a little bit all over the place for me, as in players playing out of position and stuff, but this one here looks better. We wish them well, and as they say, there's nothing, no reason why they shouldn't be able to do it because the team's alongside them near enough, and it's a great opportunity to, to get the ball rolling again because uh, it's been a pretty hectic uh, two weeks for them to get it all sorted out. Good training session on Thursday, uh, half six in the morning, and hopefully the boys are up to speed. Very true. Well, Tony, thank you very much. So, yes, Winsford United versus FC Isle of Man at the Barton Stadium at 1.30pm on Saturday. Well, Tony, thank you very much. And we'll be catching up with you on Saturday Sport tomorrow after all those fixtures have hopefully come in and the weather's held off. OK, let's take a look at rugby now. And it's a slightly quieter week for our Ireland teams as the English Clubs Championships and the Ravens Cross Bank Shield are taking a week of rest. It comes amid the Autumn Internationals taking place elsewhere. However, two exciting games do await for Manx sides. Vagabonds ladies are on home soil this Saturday with Ramsey heading away for a big challenge in the Cheshire Bowl. Dave Christian is back again to take a look at the schedule ahead of the weekend. It's an interesting time of the year, Rob, in, in rugby circles. We're in the middle of the uh, Autumn International Series. The English Clubs Championship and the Ravenscroft Manx Shield both taken a week off. Part of that is player safety to give the players regular breaks, but also part of that is because of the Autumn International fixtures. It attracts members from rugby clubs all over the country, which includes the Isle of Man. So uh, it, it really does impact the ability to get teams out. So on a serious note, as well as player safety, they've also got to look at... Uh, who's likely to be attracted by an autumn international fixture. So because the league rugby's taken a break, for the men at least, that means that there's an opportunity to play cup matches, which is why we've got County Cup on this weekend. That's why there's a round of fixtures scheduled involving Vagabonds. We'll start with Vagabonds and Chester Divas. Vagabonds, uh, it's a small league, so there aren't regular fixtures. They're playing around about one or two games a month. They're currently sitting in third place. They've played three, uh, one, two, lost one and uh, a win against Chester tomorrow will certainly give them a second place maybe only for 24 hours because second place Halifax play on Sunday afternoon. Vagabond's got pretty much a full team out, uh, everything's looking good Natalie Bush back into the front row missed her last time out and uh, Sophie Henry uh, she's going to be out on the blind side flank uh, she's been having a great season so far scored a hat full of tries uh, so the, the important players I guess are there and thereabouts. The only uh, move I raised an eyebrow with was Corinna Daly dropping from number eight into prop forward. She can do it, she's capable of it, but I think she might offer them a little bit more at eight but it depends on who's capable of playing in the front row. Outside of that, no problem at all. Sammy MacDonald at halfback, and she partnering, uh, partnering skipper Lauren Ellison, who is at 10, and Jules Harrison, the big playmaker in the centre. Uh, all those players are there. Chester Divas have got the reverse of Vaggers. They've played three, lost two. So uh, Chester, Luke there, they could be there for the taking. 
and uh, that game up at Bella Fletcher. That's an early kickoff up there, so 12 o'clock midday if you want to go and see that one. In the Cheshire Bowl, uh, we should have had two rounds of fixtures, but uh, Southern Nomads, with the rather uh, limited travel arrangements, there are currently at least uh, unable to get away to play their game against Hoylake. The only one that does go ahead is Ellesmere Port versus Ramsey. If Ramsey beat Ellesmere Port, pick up a bonus point in the process, and Nomads beat Hoylake on the 17th of December when the game's been rescheduled, could see Ramsey go through to a very, very popular midweek floodlit final in February, which uh, nobody really wants to get into at all. But uh, we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. Ramsey, good strong team going. Um, missing Harry Radford, I think. Harry been away for 18 months or so with university commitments. He's back, had his first run out last week. He's not able to travel this week, which means that uh, there's a gap at fullback. Youngster Luke Ward from the Ramsey Blues, he steps into that. And uh, he's been playing pretty well, pretty solid at fullback. So uh, Luke Ward comes in at fullback. Um, Brandon Atchison, Ramsey's points machine, who's been featuring on the front page of EnglandRugby.com. Brandon will go out to his normal wing position. Also missing Mihol Flynn in the front row. Flynn is actually coming with me to the Rugby League World Cup final, <laughs> Old Trafford on Saturday afternoon. So he's not going to be able to uh, to play either. But Rory Nicholson uh, will be stepping in for him. And uh, youngster Ross Quayle coming in to fill in in the Ramsey back row. So... Uh, Ramsey, good strong team going. Ellesmere Port looking a little bit flaky in their league. Good opportunity for Ramsey to take the points, but you never know. It's a long day travel for the lads. It's red eye out and the last flight back from Manchester. So it will be a tough day, but uh, on paper, Ramsey got a good chance. And there are as well, Rob, just a couple of junior games going on. Uh, we've got Ramsey's under-13s are playing Vagabonds under-13s. That's at uh, 12 o'clock at the Murrick Park. And Ramsey's under 14s are playing Douglas under 14s and that's at Port she that kicks off at one o'clock so there's uh, there's plenty of action on the island even if they're not senior games uh, just the ladies at the senior level but uh, there's a couple of junior games going ahead as well Manx Radio Sport Dave Christian with that report there and finally tonight results are becoming more important than ever in mixed Manx hockey as we enter the final few weeks of this season's mixed campaigns. Among the pick of the ties across the divisions tomorrow is first and second facing off in mixed division two and a potential relegation decider in the Premier League. As ever I spoke with Ben Cunningham to get his thoughts on the latest round of fixtures. So let's start with the fixtures coming up this weekend in the Rossborough mixed Premier League and the early pushback is 12.35 at the NSC and it's a battle of the B teams once again with Backers B playing Vikings B. Yeah, Vikings B uh, lost out last week to Ramsey A, but Backers B as well have had the same fortune as uh, Vikings B. It'll be a close game this one, but I think Backers B will just get it on form. I, I think Backers B will just come out on top there. In one of the five past two pushbacks up at Ramsey Grammar School, Ramsey A, they're hosting Valkyries B. Yeah, and Valkyries B really need to get something from this game, or it's going to be game over and relegation, unfortunately, for them. It's going to be a tough ask against Ramsey A, but I think... Ramsey A are going to look the favourites on the day. And the other game at 5 past 2, that's over at QE2 in Peel. This is an interesting one. And Backers A take on Valkyries A. Yeah, Backers A top of the league, Valkyries A third in the league. Uh, Backers A, of course, last week got held to a 0 0 draw by Castletown Celts. So it'll be really interesting to see if Backers can bounce back from the little slip up they had last week. But then Valkyries A might look at this and go, hang on, guys, come on. You know, Backers A got held to a 0 0 draw last week. We could probably do the same or even take the win but I think backers A might pick up their form this week and get back on winning ways. Let's move on to Rossborough mixed division one and three games there this weekend. Yep so we've got at 12.35 at King Williams College we have Castown Southerners v Vikings D. That one will be close but I think Vikings D will come out strongest on that one and get the win there. The next game again at 12.35 but this time at Peel is uh, Vikings C v Valkyries C. Valkyries C have dropped their form and they were top of the league but Harlequins A are really chasing them but then Vikings C really have got ground to make up bottom of the league at the minute so I think Valkyrie C will come out on top but Vikings C will definitely be looking to get some points out of this one and then the final game at 3.35 at the NSC is Harlequins A against Backers C Harlequins A really will be looking for the win for this game to keep the push on Valkyrie C but then Backers C did beat them last time out. Okay, and then three games as well this weekend in Rossborough Mixed Division 2. Yep, so at 12.35 at Castle Russian High School, we have Castown Cushags against uh, Viking Z. 
This will be a close one. Kushag's bottom of the league. Definitely looking to try and get some points. But then Vikings E have been really strong. So I'm going to go for a Vikings E win there. The next game is 11.05 and that's at QE2. And that's Valkyrie's D v Ramsey Rookies. Valkyrie's D have had an up and down season. But then Ramsey Rookies have been getting results when they need them. I think this one might end as a stalemate. But who knows? We'll see. And then the final game sees the top two in this league play against each other at 12.35. And that's Ramsey Grammar School. And that's Ramsey Ravens for Cast Town Camags. This will be a really close game, I reckon. But Ramsey Ravens will definitely be looking to try and get points off Camags. But I think Camags, unbeaten this season, definitely will be trying to keep that form up. And then moving on three games once again. Again in Rossborough Mixed Division 3. Yep, so the first game in this one is Derby, and that's Harlequins B v Harlequins C. That could go either way, but the B team will definitely be looking to get the win there because they'll be wanting to keep the uh, push to chase Backers Colts down. Next game is Backers Colts against Castle Town Cosney, and that's at 2.05 at Castle Russian High School. Backers Colts definitely will be looking to get the win out of this one. So I'm going to go for a Backers Colts win there. And then the final game at 3.35 is Backers D v Valkyrie's Colts. And that's at QE2. This will be a close one. Valkyrie's Colts young and full of youth. Backers D full of old and experienced players. But I think Backers D will come out on top on that one. If you had to look across the Premier League right down to Division 3, if you had to pick up maybe one or two games to keep an eye on, which would they be and why? In Division 2, I'm going to go for Ramsey Ravens v Cast Town Camags. Division 1, I'm going to go for the Harlequins A v Backers C. And then in the Premier League, I'm going to go for Backers A v Valkyries A. And last but certainly not least, we've got two games in the Rossborough Mixed Under-15s this weekend. Yep, so it's Ramsey Rogues and Rascals v Harlequins, and that's at 3.35 at Ramsey Grammar School. And the final game is Cast Town Sharks v Backers and that's at 3.35 at Castle Russian. Manx Radio Sport. Ben Cunningham with that report there. That's all we have time for this week on Friday Sport Preview. Many thanks once again to my guests this week, Tony Meppham, Dave Christian and Ben Cunningham. We'll have yourself a lovely Friday evening, whatever you're doing. And as ever, have a wonderful weekend as well. So until next time, it's bye for now. Manx Radio.